Hey guys, I've been meaning to go over my Alucab rooftop tent that I got uh, late last winter. I've used it all summer long. I got like between 50, probably 45 and 60 nights in the thing now. I've got my own opinions on a few things on how they, how they put some of this together and some of it I disagree with. I leave this thing on all the time. I don't take it off, nor is it going to come off during the winter. So a lot of people might have the option of parking their truck in a garage or something. I'm, and I'm sure that kind of thing will help the finish hold up. But for me, little pieces of the black coating have fallen off. I told uh, OK Four Wheel Drive and uh, Rin sent me some Sikaflex, I believe is what it's called. And it's a material, uh, it's, like, it's like an adhesive, but I guess that's what they coat these things with. I was kind of confused on that. I haven't gone through and done it. It was cool that he sent it to me. I'm gonna wait until more peels off and I'll just go over and touch the whole thing up. With the blackout double material on this tent, it is easy to sleep in. If you're used to camping and waking up with the sun, which is usually what I did with my Odin Design soft-sided tent, um, I would wake up as soon as the sun came up because that's just the way I am. With this thing, it is very easy to over oversleep. Now, because the material is a blackout material and it's darker, if I roll against the side that the sun is shining on, it is hot. I mean, that material is, you will definitely feel it and that will wake you up. The ladder is complete shit. That's, I mean, it's a, it's a really well-built ladder. It's burly but it doesn't even fit in the tent because if you don't put it in exactly right, the tent will close on the, the ladder and it'll push it into the sheet metal. So it's easy to do if you don't have any bedding in it. When you have bedding in it, you can't really see where it's positioned correctly. And I don't know, I didn't care for it. So I did get one of the um, a ladder, a, a Tapui ladder and just put the bracket on it. Most people have done that and that's the way to go. If you have a vehicle, even with my three inch lift and 33 inch tires, the, the ladder was barely high enough. And that kind of sucks. I wish they would just cut some of the cost off and not include the ladder. Very few people even use them at this point. The tent's awesome because of the way it mounts. You know, you can mount a light bar to the front of it underneath it, which is cool. You can mount things to the side. The roof rails are super nice, having the ability to store stuff up there, excess baggage, or if you have a kayak or a canoe or something, you can throw that up there. Since the Alu Cab is aluminum, uh, you don't have to worry as much whenever you're like going under tree branches and stuff like that. You know, you wanna be realistic with it. If you, if you would avoid that with the body of your vehicle, you should probably avoid that with the tent. But if it's just like small limbs and stuff, you're not gonna be concerned with it. One of the things that I don't, I didn't like was that I was finding, and I've never read about this complaint from anybody else, but on these latches, uh, I noticed that the, in pictures I've seen of their, their campers that they make for like Tacomas and stuff, have a wire latch system like this. So I just made one out of, out of wire and some carabiners, but I did find that, I don't remember which one it was, but one of them kept popping open when I was doing stuff in like Moab. And the last thing you want is this rattling much i don't think it would ever set itself up like you wouldn't it wouldn't just pop up on the highway or anything like that but uh but i didn't want any dirt getting in so i did make that to where these can't pop up anymore this rivet is missing finish this rivet is missing finish right here around this is starting to crack and come off i'll touch it up but So anyway, if this, if this was your tent and you didn't have these on here, this is how quick it is. So you pop that, pop that. And the tent sets itself up. And that's pretty much fully set up other than the ladder. So like I said, I keep it in a big trash bag at this point, keep everything off of it. And then that whole system uses this latch. So you stick it into the ladder hole and then you go like that and it's locked in place and it can't come out. Normally I zip this up right away um, just because whenever I'm at camp, bugs are getting in and stuff. But for the purpose of this, I'm not gonna do that. I take this bag and the, if you do decide to use the ladder that it came with, I recommend just keeping the bag in the tent because it's gonna be one of the cleanest places. If you put it in your truck and then you roll the window down one day, especially in like Colorado or something, 
you're gonna get dirt all over the bag and even though the ladder's going in the bag, the bag's dirty. So I keep the bag up here, I stick it in one of the center pockets. You have six pockets on top of the quilted top that's up there, insulated top, um, which is nice. This is a double material tent. So it, it retains warmth a lot better. Not only do you have two layers of fabric here, so it'll help trap some heat in between, sort of like an insulation, uh, but this is way thicker than what most rooftop tents are made out of. This is some pretty burly stuff. And then the screens are a higher quality than you'll see on a lot of rooftop tents too. Uh, this is from you know South Africa. They use them in South Africa and Australia and stuff a lot, and they have way worse bug problems than we do, or at least most of our country. So uh, they didn't they didn't skimp out on the screens. I did on my zippers. I put orange tabs um, on mine, uh, just paracord because it makes it a little easier to find which zipper I'm on because when you're digging around, sometimes you do get kind of confused of which window zipper you have, if you have the solid window or if you have the screen. And I have seen people complain about the way the window's set up. They don't like one that goes down. I really like it because when you zip a window up halfway, you have airflow and nobody can see you. So the people camping next to you can't see you. If it, if it only zipped down here and you wanted to roll it up, one, how are you gonna roll it up partially and keep it there? And two, if you did find a way to keep it rolled up, people would be able to see if they're walking by your camp. Like when we, when we were in Yellowstone this year, the campgrounds, everybody's walking their dogs and stuff around the campsites. And so if you're changing, if you're using this to change or just to uh, put your clothes back on in the morning or something, if you wanna have a window down, you're fully exposed. So the way they did this is really smart. It makes sense. One of the biggest complaints I've seen about this tent when you read reviews is people are mad that they have to climb over the window material to get to get to the inside. I'll show you a little trick here. Something I define as pretty common sense. But on all the windows, you roll it up like that. You no longer have to climb over that. That took me all three seconds to roll that thing up. So anyway, that solves that problem. That's one of the major complaints. Um, I keep pillows in here. I keep a comforter in here. I normally keep a Kafaru Wobi in here. Um, and then when I'm hunting, I have a down uh, in light and equipment quilt that I keep up here too during that time. So it does fit a lot of stuff. I tried fitting a two inch topper in here and that was a no go, not with the ladder. Uh, if, if I were to get rid of the ladder, but that's not an option for me. The, the mattress, in my opinion, really isn't that bad. Um, I don't know that it's good. It's really firm, which I didn't like at first, but I, I actually find that when I'm sleeping in this tent, I sleep really good. And I think for me personally, I think it's good for me to sleep on something firm every once in a while. And then it doesn't bother us. We sleep great in it. So the mattress is firm, but I don't think it's any better or worse than any other rooftop tent. All rooftop tents are really fast at setting up camp, but not all rooftop tents are fast at breaking down camp. When I had a soft-sided rooftop tent hunting last year, I was standing on top of that thing. There was frost all over. Uh, it was really sketchy. I was slipping around and I was camped at like 11,500 feet, I think, and uh, maybe a little bit higher than that. I was realizing how dangerous it was to put one of those tents away by yourself because I was in a pretty remote area um, if I would have banged my head or something falling off that thing, you know, uh, I'm sure somebody would come along, but it might be a while. So it's kind of one of those deals for me. I go out pretty wide range of weather. Uh, the rain doesn't scare me off necessarily. And the big deal with rooftop tents is that yes, they're convenient. Not all of them are as convenient as this. That's for sure. This is what, this is the fastest. This is probably the fastest tent you can set up and break down. Um, what people don't think about is that if it does rain on you, you have to go home, you have to pack up your camp, whatever day you're leaving, go home and set it all back up so it can dry out so it doesn't grow mildew, mold on it. It used to be like such a chore, it was going home and I gotta set the tent up again. And you're done putting it away because you've done it, you know, however many days you've been out. If you're like me, every day you're setting it up, breaking it down, going to the next spot. And then you get home and you just wanna relax. Well, that wasn't the way it worked. It was set it up again, let it dry out, go break it down again, climb up on top of the truck. It was, it got really old for as much as I camp, it got really old. All right, so inside the tent, um, it's surprisingly sound deadening having the dual material. Uh, there's times where I'm cooking down there below the awning at the rear. Um, and Natalie will be yelling at me in the morning, or not yelling at me, but she'll be saying stuff in the morning. 
just trying to get me to make her coffee or something. I really can't hear. It muffles sound a lot, which is nice for when you're sleeping. It is somewhat sound deadening. You have this quilted top. This is a hardcore lighting uh, strip. This isn't permanently installed, but it works way better than the lights that are included. So you have uh, six pockets here. I use this bag for boots, two different bags for boots. Um, that way, if they are muddy, I don't want the insides of the pockets getting muddy and then eventually coming out into the bedding. And then, so my wife usually gets two, I get two, and this is usually for stuff that stays in here. So we've got a shoe pocket, a clothes pocket. The quilting is pretty nice. It's pretty, pretty thick insulation on the top and it does work. This, this tent stays way warmer than any soft-sided tent I've ever slept in by far. Like I said, this thing's dual material. So if you look in here, I know this is dark. I don't have the light on here, but um, so it is, it is doubled up. Of course, the screen, you're going to lose some of that. But this whole pocket up here above the windows um, is going to capture a lot of heat and it's going to help retain a lot of that heat. The rear is the only spot where there's an awning on, over the window, which in my opinion is plenty. This thing has power down here. I've got all sorts of adapters and stuff. Here's the lights. They're really directional and they don't really do much good. Then I've got a really long USB iPhone cable here. This window has, these side windows have enough of an overlay that you can unzip this to about here and then fold the, fold the hard part over and leave the screen up and you'll get plenty of airflow. Something I noticed putting this tent up every time is that if you have all of the windows zipped up, the, uh, the, not the screens, but the actual windows themselves, the tent won't close because it's like a it's like blown it's like a blown up balloon. When you pull the lid down, the whole thing wants to inflate because the air's got to go somewhere. The first time I noticed this was in Yellowstone. I never thought about this before, but this could be seen as a downside for sure. Little Miss Blue, she woke me up in the middle of the night. Natalie was sleeping there. Blue was sleeping in between us, and Blue is uh, lightly pant not really panting, but she I could tell she's breathing weird. So then I start paying attention to Natalia and she's breathing really slow, like really deep and really slow. And then I catch myself and I'm breathing the same way. And my first thought is there's no oxygen in this tent. So I cracked my window just a little bit and let some air out. And within about two or three minutes everybody Natalia never even woke up. Dog laid back down. She felt fine. She was waking me up because she noticed something was wrong. There was a lack of oxygen in this tent and I'm 100 percent sure of it. I sleep with it fully zipped up by myself and it's fine, but with three living organisms in here to breathe in oxygen all night. So if you're sleeping with more than just yourself in here, you might want to leave one of the windows cracked. And I mean, there's a lot of, uh, it was just a little bit colder. And, um, but yeah, generally speaking, we usually sleep with one of the windows at least a little bit open, but something to consider. Now, some people have complained about this tent having condensation issues. I've never had that. Some people have like water pooling up on the floor of it from fluctuation. I did buy from um, Mattress Insider, I think is the website. I bought like a, a condensation pad and I had to cut it into size, but I made it fit the entire tent. So I don't know if that's part of my, what's helping. As soon as I saw this thing didn't come with a con anti-condensation mat, I did buy one right away. It's too expensive of a product for me to let it go to shit because they... They kind of skipped out on that. I don't know why they did that. And I have dehumidifier bags. It's these little white bags that have a penguin on them. And when they turn blue, you microwave them and it takes all the water back out of the bag. You put it back in here. I've owned this thing for getting close to a year now. I think I got it in December last year or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but I've never had to change the bag out. I just kept it in here because so many people had condensation issues. Hasn't been an issue for me, but I'm going to keep it in here just in case. I, I'm really good about popping this thing open as soon as I get home every time. And in Colorado, stuff dries super fast. If you live in the Midwest or something, it's really humid. You might need to come up with your own game plan or keep multiple dehumidifier bags in here to try to collect some of that condensation because you don't want mold growing in your tent, of course. And uh, also, whenever I'm letting it dry out, I'll turn the fan on and let it just circulate air. It does help. Roll all the windows down, leave the screen zipped and then uh, just let it air out all day. And it doesn't, take, it doesn't take very long to set it up or break it down. So it's not a hassle when you get home. And that's a big, that's a big one to me is um, don't just think about your rooftop tent at camp. Think about what you have to do when you're taking care of the thing. You know, these aren't being built in China. These are being hand built by people, put onto a ship and shipped over here and, um, and then sold to us. So it is expensive, but you are getting a way higher quality product than um, competitors. That's my 
overview review of the alu cab this is the gen 3 um and i don't know in my opinion it's one of the best tents you can buy and if you spend enough time outside it's justified